What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day. Here to give you a uh, full review of my 2018 Yamaha R1. Um, just branching off of what the uh, first look video was, I want to give you guys kind of a more in-depth look at what makes this bike so special. Some of its shortfalls, things that I love about it. Um, I'm going to do a five things that I, you know, kind of dislike and five things that I really love about this bike in another video. Just wanted to give you a full on review of this bike. Like I said, I've had this bike for about, uh, about three to four months now. So it's kind of been kind of a longer term review. So I can kind of dive in and tell you guys kind of what I like about this bike, what I don't like about it. Um, things that, you know, kind of have left me wondering why Yamaha did this and just you know fundamentally on the whole i do love this bike though um when i first got the bike obviously it was in stock form um it had the giant giant uh catalytic converter cat box and muffler on it um now from the factory yamaha has to do this obviously for emissions but uh it really does make the bike run extremely hot this bike gets hotter than most other bikes I've ever ridden, uh, barring something like a Ducati, you know, 1299, 1199 V4. Um, those bikes get extremely hot. This bike is almost up there with that. Um, I took that off. Uh, I'll do a review on the full exhaust system in another video as well, but now it runs quite a bit cooler. Um, now the bike uh, comes comes with the same wheels actually as the R1M, which helps a lot in flickability and just general lightness feeling of the bike. It definitely doesn't feel like a 600. Anyone who tells you a leader bike feels like a 600 um, is kind of lying, because ultimately most of the 600s weigh about 40 plus pounds less than these almost sometimes. Um, they just do. The motor in them is quite a bit heavier. Um, you know, the bike is fundamentally bigger as a whole. It has to, you know, add components to it that, you know, the 600 just doesn't have to. Um, now, rideability wise, this bike is not the easiest bike to ride on the street every day. Um, I'm 6'2", and it, it's, I'll be, I'll be frank with you, it's uncomfortable on longer than 20 minute trips. Uh, the seat is not meant for you know, long distance riding. It's meant to move from side to side really easily on track, uh, you know, flick the bike over. You know, we're not really designed that. I'm sure something like a, you know, much more, you know, gel kind of seat, padded seat would help a lot with that. Um, the things that I really, really love about this bike that Yama really kept true to um, with all of their designs, which is make them so iconic, is just the bodywork. The bodywork on Yamahas have always been very striking, and in my opinion, one of the better designs in the sport bike industry. You know, coming from the flying buttresses in the back, um, the LED tail light that's very slim. Uh, the front end of this bike is, you know, it's, it's subjective, right? It's really grown on me. Um, when I first saw this bike come out, I wasn't really sure on it, guys. I absolutely wasn't. Um, the more I've stared at it, though, the more I absolutely adore it. Uh, the LED, you know, headlights, um, which are very low profile, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a love or hate kind of thing, but I really love it. Um, now, let's see, the TFT display. The TFT display on this bike is really, really good. It's a full TFT dash. Um, it, it has all the settings that you could ever really want, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you have everything, everything, everything from, you know, your MotoGP M1 technology, we're talking slide control, you know, traction control, lift control, the quick shifter, up and down, which I talked about in the previous video. Yamaha actually added a auto blooper down now. So now you have quick shifter, you know, full up and down abilities. Um, you have everything that you could possibly ever want in every variation in between. So you have one to nine, you know, settings for the traction control. Um, fully adjustable to whatever suits your kind of riding style. Um, I really, really enjoy having the ability to make those kinds of settings. You know, bikes before were very analog and you couldn't really adjust the bike accordingly to what you as a rider really liked or what you didn't like. Um, this bike kind of 
changed the game in 2015 and really made it affordable to you know have a bike that you could tailor to your riding style. Now this bike doesn't have the Smart EC and Smart EC2 system from the new R1M, but I would almost argue that I like the ability to analogly adjust my suspension still. Um, a lot of race cars, a lot of race bikes, they still use you know manually adjustable suspension because you have that a little bit more adjustability from an electronic, like a digital system. Um, Power-wise, this bike came with about 200 horsepower um, from the crank from the factory. Um, and I can tell you right now, it has almost every bit of that now. Uh, since I've had the bike, I've made quite a few modifications, which I will touch on in another mods video, but I actually have a uh, Superbike Unlimited flash tune on it. Um, the headers on this bike were titanium from the factory, like I discussed in the first look video. Um, so they're already very, very light, able to dissipate heat. Uh, I deleted the cat box, obviously, and added a full exhaust system, which makes the bike sound absolutely incredible now. Um, it full chat, this bike just absolutely screams. It is a monster. Um, I actually deleted the AIS system and a number of other things, but uh, now the bike runs really, in my opinion, the way it should have from the factory. Uh, really, really, really good bike. Um, tire wise, it came from the factory with Bridgestones. Um, they're okay. Uh, they're RS10s. They're not the best wearing tire in the world. Um, you can see I still have the marks on mine because I've only ridden it, you know, to and from work a couple times and just breaking the bike in. Um, I'm sitting right now at about 900 miles, so, um, you know, we still have the lines on the tires. But eventually we will get there. Um, basically prepping the bike for track days coming up here this year at Coda. Uh, I currently live in the Austin area. So, you know, if you guys live in the Austin area, you guys are going to Coda um, track days this year or track days in general around the Southeast, feel free to give me a shout. Uh, but yeah, this bike, you know, it's, it's got all the fundamentals there. The brakes are phenomenal. The motor sounds absolutely incredible. Um, Yamaha has always done a fantastic job, in my opinion, at making their motors very, very reliable, uh, very strong. Uh, they sound absolutely incredible. Um, you know, barring that, everything else on the bike, you know, is typical of the 15 to 17 model year. There weren't too many revisions, um, but the revisions they did make, like I discussed in the other video, um, you know, the auto blipper, um, you know, the launch control, all of these other things that Yamaha, you know, kept in place have really made this bike a complete package. Um, I'll go ahead and give you guys a little bit of an exhaust clip now, a little sound bite, so you guys can enjoy that. That sounds absolutely incredible. Um, love it, love this bike. If you guys enjoyed this review, uh, feel free to give this video a like and comment down below. Uh, I'm gonna do a few more reviews on a couple other bikes here coming up pretty soon. Uh, I'm gonna go in depth on the modifications on the bike and kind of just give you guys more of a, like I said, of five things I kind of like and dislike on the bike. Uh, but other than that, I would highly, highly recommend this bike. I bought it myself. Um, tested quite a few other bikes in the marketplace and I'll tell you guys this bike is an absolute weapon um, I can't wait to ride it on the track um, can't wait to see you guys in the next video make sure to subscribe take care have a good rest of your day